Well, hey guys, this is Dan Giles with Let's Fix It. Is your wall thermostat for your heat pump old and dilapidated? And is it a mercury thermostat? Well, if it is, I'm going to show you how to change it and put a digital heat pump thermostat in. Show you what all the wiring is all for and how to hook it up. So let's get started. So we're going to replace a analog mercury based thermostat with a digital thermostat and I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of removing the old one to save some time. I do want to show you the installation of the base plate for the digital thermostat. So let's head over there on the other wall and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay so here's what I've done. I've installed this base plate and this screw on this side, I put it right in the middle of that slot. It's a slot where you can move this base plate back and forth. The screw on this side is an up and down slot. And so I got it pretty close to level and put the screw right in the middle so that it gives me some play to be able to bounce that up and down to get it level. But I take it another step further and get a little bullet level. And on this plate, it says level here, level here. It's right across these two. So I put it on that and get that bubble right in the middle. Make sure it's good and level. And then take my screwdriver and tighten down this screw. And go ahead and snug this one up a little bit. And now that base plate is straight. The worst thing you can look at when you come in and you see this thermostat all cockeyed. Now on a digital thermostat it doesn't matter whether it's level or not, but for aesthetic reasons you want to make sure you get it level. Now we'll get involved in these wires, but first let's talk about something else. Okay, the first thing I did when I started this project was to make sure that I turned off the breaker to the air handler and also the outdoor unit. Didn't want to take any chances of shorting out that air handler the low voltage side of it anyway so if you don't turn the power off to your air conditioning system first before you start removing those wires and you go remove them and you short them out chances are you're going to blow one of these fuses this is a three amp that's a five amp right in between these two terminals on the inside of this plastic you'll see a little black burn mark on that that's going to tell you you've blown that fuse uh, these the little three amps are actually clear so you can see that a little bit better so it is important that you shut that power off first before you do any work on your air conditioner system once you've turned the power off to your system then you can go ahead and remove that thermostat from the walls but you definitely want to take care with that therm that old thermostat mercury thermostat the problem is how do you dispose of this once you've taken it off your wall and the responsible thing to do is to find a recycling center in your area that will take these and dispose of them properly. The thing that's not so responsible is just to throw them in the trash. You don't want to do that. Mercury is really bad for the environment. You know, you hear stories about it all the time. Definitely, you want to dispose of your mercury thermostats properly. I'll put a link in the description below to help you find a place in your area all you have to do is just plug in your zip code and it'll tell you exactly where to go to properly recycle and dispose of your mercury thermostats. Now we want to know what wire goes where and what the color codes mean. As you can see, we've got quite a few different colors here. Now, white is going to be for your heat. Now, on this system, brown is the common. Now it is most common that your common wire would be blue, but in this instance, it has used the brown wire. Your red wire is your power. That's gonna go in here and it's gonna tell the system what to do. Your orange wire, that's for your cooling. That's your reversing valve. That goes to your outdoor unit. That's gonna switch the reversing valve. Green wire is your fan motor inside. That's that's what's going to turn on your indoor fan motor. Yellow is your cooling cycle outside. That tells the compressor and the fan motor to turn on. Black, that's an extra wire. Normally on systems, heat pumps, standard heat pump systems, you'll have an extra few wires 
that are just normally just wrapped around the back side of that. It's a good thing to have so that if you do get a short in one of your other wires, you got a couple of extra wires that you can convert over so that you'll have your low voltage system. So now what we'll do is go ahead and go through the steps of wiring this in to this little block. And it has color codes on it, but you'll need to make sure that you get the right thing on there. Brown is your common, but you would see blue on here or B on here. You wouldn't use that. You're going to use the brown under the C. So there's not always going to be correct color coding, color for color, or color to initial. So just pay attention to where your common wire is and what color that is and know which one of these is your common terminal on the base plate and you'll know how to wire it up. All right, since common is first, we'll go ahead and wire that in. That's the brown wire. It's going to go right in the top. And then this little screwdriver right here is basically a thermostat screwdriver made by Klein. I'll put a link of this in the description below. It's got a neat little handle on the back end of it that you can just rest that on your palm and you turn that with your hand and it doesn't slip out. It allows you not to have to take your hand off of the tool. Okay, the next one is B. That's not going to be used in this, but we do have an R next. That's your red lead. We'll go ahead and wire that one in. Then we have an L. We're not using that terminal. The next one is O. That's orange. That's also your reversing valve. Next to that is your green. That's your fan motor. Then we have a Y, yellow, that's your cooling. Then our next wire and last one is the white, the heat. We're going to put that on the emergency leg because this brings in the emergency heat. Okay, and then we'll just clean up these wires and get them as flat to the back of this or even in behind it so that the faceplate can fit properly. And what I also like to do is all these wires that are leaning off to the side so that I don't have any issues with anything shorting out between them. I like to go ahead and separate these and straighten them up. And there you go. We wired in the base plate for this digital thermostat. Now we'll grab the front of this and install that. So we'll go ahead and snap this in place. And then all we have left to do now is turn the breakers back on for the indoor and outdoor unit and go ahead and turn this over to cool, drop our temperature. Now these thermostats do have a time delay, so you'll want to give it the time that it's, that's built into it for the fan and the outdoor unit to come on. Usually it's set at about five minutes. When you turn your breaker back on, your display is going to light up if you didn't put your batteries in. So you won't know, if you got batteries in there, you won't know if it powered up or not. But what you will see, when you turn this to cool, it lights up the screen for a little while. It said it's 78, so we'll drop this down to 73. Now because it has that delay on it, 
it's going to start blinking cool on here on the bottom corner until everything comes on and then it will stay lit cool on we'll go ahead and set this to auto and cool we've dropped our temperature down so that we can have it call for cooling whenever the time delay runs out so there you go. You just replaced your own heat pump thermostat to a digital from a Mercury. So be sure that you are being responsible with that old Mercury thermostat and disposing of it properly. Like I said earlier, I'll leave a link in the description below of where you can go to properly dispose of the Mercury or the whole thermostat itself in your neighborhood. You can just plug in your zip code and go for it. Anyway. If this has been helpful to you, if it got you through a little bit of trouble, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if it worked out for you. This is Dan Giles with Let's Fix It. I'll see you soon.